Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. In this video, we're going to continue looking at how you can use conversion type problem solving to solve tons of different problems. In the last video, we introduced this idea that conversion factors are secretly hiding everywhere. And in this video, we're going to use that to solve a few more problems. So let's get right to the problems. This problem says how many moles of sodium chloride are needed to make 320 milliliters of a 1.2 mole per liter solution. Now, I'm assuming at this point in your class, you don't know anything about molarity or maybe even moles, but you can actually still solve this problem. And if you keep this problem solving technique in mind as you go forward in the class, it makes your life much easier. So step one is identify our conversion factors. So remember, when we identify our conversion factors, we're looking for things that have multiple units with the number. Here we have 320 milliliters, so that's just one unit, milliliters. On the other hand, over here, our molarity, 1.2 moles per liter, has two units in it. And that means that this guy is secretly our conversion factor. It's gonna go between moles and liters. Those are the two units it has. So now we're gonna write the equality. So the equality that we can add as a conversion factor here is 1.2 moles equals one liter. Okay, so we've identified the conversion factors and we've written equalities. Now we're gonna identify our starting quantity. In this problem, there's really only one other number, 320 milliliters, and so that's pretty straightforward. We're gonna start with 320 milliliters. We know eventually we want to get to moles. We may not know what moles are, or we may, but we know that's what we're going to. Okay, now I'm gonna look at the conversion factors I have, which is two from these two different equalities. One has milliliters and one doesn't. So where should I start? Well, my units start here at milliliters, so that means I need to use the conversion factor next that has milliliters. And milliliters have got to go on the bottom, so they'll be canceled out. So milliliters go on the bottom, liters go up top. And then I know I'm going to plug in 1,000 by the milliliters and one by the liters. So that's just converting from milliliters to liters. Really important conversion in chemistry that comes up over and over again. Okay, now if you think about what units I have, my milliliters are gone and I have liters right now. If I were to just stop the problem, I would have gotten to liters. So what has liters in it? Well, the conversion factor we've already used, we shouldn't use that again, and our conversion factor we wrote down that goes between moles, what we're getting to, and liters. So let's use that one. We know we want to get rid of liters, so I'm going to put one liter down there, and we want to go to moles, so I'm going to put 1.2 moles up there. And now my liters cancel, and I'm left with moles. If I round that to two sig figs, because my input has two sig figs, I'm going to get 0 0.38 moles. So now you know you need 0.38 moles of sodium chloride to make 320 milliliters of a 1.2 mole per liter solution. So that's how these conversion factors, these secret hidden conversion factors are so helpful. You could have done this with the molarity equation, which you'll probably learn, which is molarity equals moles over liters, right? Or you can just treat it as a conversion problem, which is frankly much easier than doing the algebra. Okay, last problem here as an example, and this one gets a little harder. First, we're gonna identify the conversion factors. Here, there's two. This problem says what volume of medicine is needed for a 10.2 pound infant if a suspension of acetaminophen, that's Tylenol, by the way, contains 32 milligrams per milliliter and the proper dose is 10 milligrams per kilogram. Okay, so that's a lot. But let's, let's just follow the same steps. Uh, we'll talk about what's going on here as we do that. Let's identify the conversion factors. Well, 10.2 pounds just has one unit, pound, and that's an infant. So we're dealing here with a young infant who needs some Tylenol, and that infant weighs 10.2 pounds. We see here 32 milligrams per milliliter. Notice that has two units, so that can be used as a conversion factor. Let's add that here. 32 milligrams equals one milliliter. Now it's nice here to think a little bit more about what those milligrams and milliliter means. The milligrams there is not referring to the uh, weight of the infant, but rather is referring to the acetaminophen. So this is 32 milligrams of Tylenol or of acetaminophen. The milliliter is the volume of my solution. So basically, if you give Tylenol to young children, you don't make them swallow a pill because they can't. There's a suspension, so it's a liquid, and it has a bunch of Tylenol molecules in it. And what this is telling us is that for every milliliter of that liquid, there's 32 milligrams. Okay, so that milliliter there refers to our uh, suspension, our solution. Okay, so that's one conversion factor. 
that we have. And then we actually have another one. The second number here, 10 milligrams per kilogram, also has two units. It's gonna go between milligrams and kilograms. So 10 milligrams equals one kilogram. Now, it's again useful to think about what that milligram and kilogram represent. The milligram is once again about the acetaminophen or the Tylenol. How do I know that? Well, it tells me that the correct dose is 10 milligrams per kilograms. So the 10 milligrams there is referring to the dose. That's the amount of medicine. The per kilogram, on the other hand, is telling me about the weight of the infant or patient that you're gonna be giving the medicine to. And so this is about the mass, or we'll just call it body weight. So this is about body weight. Okay, with that in mind, we're ready to go ahead and start solving this problem. Remember, the main goal is to give an infant the correct amount of medicine. So pretty important problem to be able to do well, say, if you're a nurse. All right, so identify your starting quantity. Now here, if we hadn't already identified the conversion factors, you might be confused as to which number to start with. But now that we've identified the conversion factors, it's pretty plain that we should start with the 10.2 pounds. Remember, our starting quantity is always gonna be a simple thing with just one unit, not one of our conversion factors. So 10.2 pounds is what we're gonna start with. All right, now I have three conversion factors, or equalities that I've written down. 2.2 pounds is one kilogram, 32 milligrams is one milliliter, and 10 milligrams is one kilogram. So only one of those has pounds. So I know I'm gonna start with this guy with pounds. Pounds need to go on the bottom to cancel out. Kilograms will go up top. So I'm gonna put 2.2 pounds and one kilogram. All right, so that gets rid of pounds. Now, I need to use kilograms. So here, I only have one thing that is about kilograms of body mass. Remember, I started here at the beginning this was the baby's weight, so that's body mass. So what I did is I started with body mass, and I went to kilograms for the body mass, and now I'm gonna actually switch between the body mass and the weight of the medicine. So that's this conversion factor right here. And the way you know that is that's the only one that has kilograms floating around. One kilogram in general does not equal 10 milligrams, right? It's only because this is a dosing problem where we can have this equality between amount of medicine and body weight. So kilograms, once again, are gonna go on the bottom and it's gonna go next to one because that's what's in front of the kilograms. And then 10 milligrams is gonna go up top. So now our pounds have canceled out, our kilograms have canceled out, and we're left at this point with milligrams and we're no longer with milligrams of body weight. Now we're at milligan, milligrams of medicine, okay? So last step, we have a suspension. Remember a liquid full of this medicine. And so I don't need the mass of medicine, I need the volume, that is milliliters. And that's what the question asks for, which I probably should have pointed out a little earlier on, right? It's asking for volume, which we know can be measured in milliliters. Now, let's say you didn't know that. Well, there's only one number you haven't used, and there's only one number that has milligrams. So you can go ahead and know that milligrams is going to go on the bottom, and milliliters is going to go up top. 32 is what goes with the milligrams of acetaminophen and one milliliter is what goes with the volume of medicine. So now, what you've just figured out, as soon as we multiply through on our calculator, is the volume of medicine you need to administer to this infant. And if I round to three sig figs, I'm gonna get 1.45 milliliters. Okay, so that's a relatively challenging version of these problems where there's secret conversion factors floating all around. And by identifying them and following the units through our problem, we can easily solve a ton of different chemistry problems. So if you have any questions, please ask those below. Thanks for watching.